We are learning new information about the events that led to the killing of a Benton Harbor teenager 30 years ago. The state attorney general's office releasing new details from what it uncovered in an investigation over the last six months. And News 8's David Horak is live in our Kalamazoo studio with the details. David. Good evening, guys. First off, in this nine-page report, the AG's office determined that there were three suspects in the killing of Eric McGinnis. Attorney General Dana Nessel says there were pivotal interviews with people who witnessed the events on that night in 1991 that changed this case from a drowning to a homicide. And she believes race was a key part in the killing. In the report, the Attorney General's office details what happened the night of May 17, 1991. They named the main suspect as Curtis Pitts. Witnesses say he kicked 16 year old Eric McGinnis on the pier, knocking him into the St. Joseph River. Witness interviews conducted by state investigators now and local police then say Pitts referred to black people by the N word. This case, clearly, there were racial elements to it. There, there's no question about that. Pitts, the main suspect, died by suicide in 2003, a second suspect, Theodore Warmbean, died in 2007, and a third suspect whose name was not included in the report will not be charged due to a lack of evidence. Even if these are people that we can't prosecute, they're no longer alive, or in some cases not on homicides, but other kinds of cases, the statute of limitations have run, and, and that's the thing, you know, that case involved some other actors who have, may have committed some other crimes, not homicide, where the statute of limitations has run. However, Attorney General Dana Nessel is open to other avenues in bringing justice for the family. I think that it's worth exploring other ways to to view the case and to see was there an injustice that was done here uh, and was it intentional. McGinnis's family and their attorney are calling for the Department of Justice to look into this case on the grounds of the recently passed Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. Nessel says she welcomes the idea. But are there other actors at play? Why, why this case was never resolved? I don't know the answer to that question. And if the Department of Justice can provide that answer, then I think it's a good thing. So far, we have yet to hear back from the U.S. Department of Justice if they will pursue this case on any grounds, including that of the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. We're live inside of our Kalamazoo studio. David Horak, News 8.